Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. Today we're going to be taking a look at the iPad Mini 6 and whether it's a viable option for editing 4K and even 5K footage. After all, this device does have the A15 processor, which is the same one that's in the new iPhone 13 lineup. It is clocked down a little bit, but still blazing fast. And for many people, this could potentially be the perfect all-in-one device. It's the perfect size for mounting in a controller and flying a drone. I be it, it's only 500 nits, but still very doable. And now because it has a USB-C port, it's fully compatible with these external drives. So content management is a lot easier now. So today in this video, I'm going to launch LumaFusion and we're going to do some quick editing tests just to see how it handles 5K footage and 4K footage. On top of that, we're going to talk about the overall editing experience on a smaller screen. And and a bit of a spoiler alert here for you. The last three videos that I uploaded to YouTube have all been edited on the iPad mini. And I must say the editing experience is quite nice. Now before we get started here, I do have some files I want to transfer over. So I'll just show you how you can transfer your content over from something like an SSD. And that's a very important part of editing. If you decide to make the leap to become a mobile editor, you will need some form of hard drive as the space on these tablets are limited and they can fill up very quick. So we've got our SSD attached. So let's launch our files app. We'll select SSD. And I'm going to select this folder here. That's got the footage that we're going to be using to test the editing today. So we'll select move on my iPad. And I'm just going to put it right down into the root directory. So we'll hit copy. Now, if you're not aware, with iOS 15, we did finally get a progress bar. That was one thing that was missing in previous versions. You can see by this little kind of chart here at the top, that gives us a quick view of the transfer progress. But we can actually click on that as well. And that's going to give us some more detail. It shows us how much footage has been transferred over and it gives us a time remaining. So as you can see there, it's all done transferring. And we just moved about 30 gigabytes worth of files over. And that took right around a minute, just a little bit over. So that's nice and fast. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch LumaFusion here. Now we're going to go ahead here and select files. And that's where we're going to browse for our content. And there we go there. There's our drone and GoPro footage. I got some footage here from the Hero 10 Black, all in 5K. And I've got some footage here from the DJI Air 2S. And this has all been captured in 4K. Let's go ahead here. I am going to create a new project. And uh, we're just going to drag some footage down into the timeline. As you can see here, we can scrub through the footage nice and easy. There's no hesitation. There's no skipping. There's no lag. That can be very important when editing because, uh, you know, that gets very annoying when... Your content can't be played in real time. Let's go ahead and we'll just play it here. Bring it up full screen. As you can see there, everything moves nice and smooth. There's not a lot of movement at that point. So let's uh, change the position. So as you can see there, that's 4K footage and it's playing it back beautifully. Let's go ahead and we'll add another 4K clip over top of that. Here I'm going to double click on that and uh, we're going to shrink it down to do kind of a picture in picture. We'll go back and as you can see here, everything still plays nice and fluidly. We have two 4K video tracks and everything works fantastically. There's no hesitation again, no lag, no skipping of frames. So with that test alone just shows you the power of the iPad Mini 6. But let's go ahead here. Let's add a third track. We'll let that download. And again, I'm going to put that as a picture in picture. Or maybe we'll do a half screen. We'll just do that there. So now again, let's go ahead and play that. We'll bring it up full screen. As you can see now, we now have three 4K tracks and everything is playing nice and smoothly. It's not bogging down, and again, it's not skipping or dropping frames. So let's go ahead here. Now I'm gonna import some 5.3K GoPro footage. This is from the Hero 10 Black. So let's, um, let's find a spot here, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring it full screen again. We'll hit play. And as you can see, it plays with no issue at all. Now again here, if we zoom right in, we can scrub along at frame by frame precision. We can just go frame by frame. And that's pretty important too when editing. You may have to find something very precise. And again there it doesn't do any type of skipping. We can pick the exact frame we want. 
with no issues at all. So as you could see by those demonstrations, the iPad mini 6 can handle 4K footage, 5.3K footage, without any type of issue at all. Now the preview is a little small in the configuration I have it right now, but one of the new features of LumaFusion version 3, you can make that a little bit bigger, and that way you have a much bigger preview area. Now as mentioned, the last three videos I edited for my YouTube channel, I've edited it all on the iPad mini just to really test it out to see how well it works, what the experience was like, and I must say it was actually quite enjoyable. Normally I edit on a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It's a large screen, but it's almost a little too large to be hand holding it while you're sitting on a couch or out in a patio editing. But the iPad mini is absolutely perfect. It's great for editing at a desk like I'm doing now, but if you want to sit on your couch or out on a back patio, it's perfect for that because there's hardly any weight to it and it's just a nice size and very convenient to hold. Now one last test I do want to do here before I go is do a render speed comparison against the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the M1 processor. This has quite a bit more RAM. This is 16 gigabytes compared to 4 gigabytes I believe. This one here has the M1 processor and this has the new A15 Bionic. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how they perform against one another. So what I'm going to do here is create a new project. I'm going to create a new project on the iPad Pro as well. And I'm going to make a quick edit on both. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to all the footage. So just so we have a nice fair comparison. So I'll probably fast forward through this part because this could take a few minutes. So what I've got here, I've got three tracks of 4K footage. I have a picture in picture. I have a crop version. I've added some LUTs. I've sped up the footage six times on some of the clips. And we're just gonna do a quick test. The total clip here is three minutes and 16 seconds. It should be the exact same on both. Yep, it is. So I have another phone here just so we can run a timer. But let's go ahead and we'll get the export ready to go. So we'll select movie, photos, uh, we're going to keep everything the same. We'll leave it at 150 megabit ultra, 60 frames per second, 4K. So make sure everything is the same, 60 frames per second, 4K, and ultra 150 megabits per second. Well, I was off there by a second, but uh, we'll know. Let me hit the timer here and uh, we'll see how long it takes. So far, it looks like it's pretty well keeping up. Almost the exact same render speed. So I might go ahead and fast forward through this part and I'll be back in a second. So the first one is done and uh, we'll mark the time of the second one here. So as you can see, there was a little bit of difference, but not by much. You can see the iPad Pro took 4 minutes and 4 seconds to render that video, and the iPad Mini here took an additional 20 seconds. Now I did start it first so we can add maybe another second to that, so 21 seconds just to be fair. But really at the end of the day, 20 seconds is nothing. So in all honesty, I've actually been really impressed with the editing capabilities of the iPad Mini 6, and as mentioned, if you're thinking about getting the iPad Mini 6 as an all-in-one device to manage your content on a hard drive, attach it to a controller to fly your drones, and for editing in apps such as LumaFusion, or or even iMovie which is free comes with the iPad mini 6 it definitely is a viable option and the experience is quite nice hopefully this answered any questions that you may have had about editing on the iPad mini 6 if you do have any other questions please feel free to ask me down in the comments I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can if you enjoyed this video and got some value out of it make sure you hit that thumbs up button it really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one Thank you.